Let's take a look at the July blocks for our Civil War sampler. If you're new to this program, we're using Barbara Brackman's book, Civil War Sampler, that has 50 blocks in it. And we're basically doing one each week. We started this program several months ago, and if you'd like to jump in, you're going to need a copy of the book, and then you can go back and watch the previous videos. Instead of assigning one block each week, I'm assigning them month by month. And what I've done is I've gone through the book and I've collected them together in sort of groups that make sense. At least they make sense to me. So if you'd like to um, join us for this, get a copy of the Civil War Sampler book and then grab your fabrics you'd like to use. You do not have to use Civil War reproduction fabrics. I'm doing mine in a variety of different ways so that I can give you some options along the way. Now, the book itself, I've taken apart and put into this spiral binder. And that's so that I can insert page protectors between here that include my blocks. So this is what the cover quilt looks like. And the blocks in the book are available in two sizes. I'm making the eight inch size. It's also available in a 12 inch size. For this particular quilt, I've gone ahead and laid it out. And so it will measure 73 and a half inches by 89 inches without any borders. So that's just the quilt portion of it right there with eight inch blocks set on point. Now you notice my little um, guide that I have here. I've laid it out and I have the numbers on there. These yellow tabs that I have on here correspond to the blocks here. There are a few blocks, the ones noted in yellow, in this particular quilt that are not in this book. There are 50 blocks in this quilt and we will have 50 blocks for ours. So there are some blocks in the book that are not in the quilt that's pictured here. So our blocks for this month are blocks number 8, 24, 32, and 36. You have four blocks for July because there are four Sundays in July. Our first block this month is block number eight in the book, and it's called Fox and Geese. And it's a very simple arrangement, and it's a very easy block. I don't think you'll have any trouble putting this one together. It's basically two four patches that are made up with half square triangles to make a larger four patch. You can follow the instructions for cutting right here in the page according to whether you're making 8 inch blocks or 12 inch blocks. So it's the A section says four medium light squares. So these are my four squares here and those are the ones that are cut A. Remember in the very beginning of your book there's a page that tells you what size that A is supposed to be cut according to the instructions for the 8 inch block or the 12 inch block. So you use your reference page and you'll know what size to cut everything. Now you need to make two half square triangles for each of these blocks. So that's four half square triangles using your backing round fabric and this fabric that matches here because I'm following the color diagram that you have over here. So when you cut those um, half square triangles, you can use your favorite method. If you like triangles on a roll, or you like the draw a line method, or you like working from with a specialty ruler from a strips, whatever you would like to do to get your half square triangles made. And so you'll sew those together as a four patch. You can press your seams in any direction because no seams nest in this block and all of the blocks will be surrounded by sashing. So they're not going to nest with the block next to it either. Now you have two large half square triangle blocks that go into this and those use 7 8 inch measurements. So if you like to just round up, make your pieces and then sew, uh, square them up before you sew them together, you could use that method as well. Now when you put your blocks together, they go together as a four patch, so these two and these two, and then I would join these two, and you could just press your seams to one side. 
either side. It doesn't make any difference. And if you're someone who likes to spin your seams, you can go ahead and spin them as well if that's what you like to do. Now, I'm going to be making this block, and this is the version that goes with my red and cream colored um, quilt that I'm making. And I'm going to be using dark sashings on the outside edge. So I'm trying to keep the edge of my blocks as light as possible. So I can reverse these and put the darker pieces towards the center. And so it would be different than the block that you look here. And I could also turn them and go this way with it if I wanted to. None of these are wrong of these arrangements. It's actually a different name for this block when you turn them that way, but if you like your fabrics better that way, you can certainly do that because it's your quilt. Now I have this block already made. This is for the batik version of my um, quilt that I'm making. And so, so you can see that I've lined my little bow tie looking units up there same way and I have my darks to the outside edge but they're just slightly darker than the triangles that are in the center. So this is my fox and geese block and remember I'm making the 8 inch finished size. The second block for this month is called the New England block and it's number 24 in your book. This block is a little bit different in that instead of four units across, four by four, we have five by five, and they're not equal units. The center cross through the middle of this finishes at one inch. So these rectangles would be an inch and a half wide cut. So you can follow that cutting instruction from your book. But that means that the half square triangles here on the corner need to finish at one and three quarter inches instead of two. So those can be cut the way that it's indicated in the book, but then you'll be using these five eighths inch measurements. And I know that some of you don't like to do that. So if you'd rather use the, what I call the draw a line method, where you take two squares, put them on top of each other, draw a diagonal line, and then sew on that line, and then trim, leaving a quarter inch seam allowance. You would cut your squares two and one quarter inches in order to do this. If you like to use a specialty ruler, like the quick trim and circle ruler, or the corner clipper ruler, or even the 4590, you would be able to cut these from strips that measured two and a quarter inches, and you'll need eight half square triangles. After that, all of the squares and rectangles are cut the exact size that's listed here in the book. Now, the center section right here, that little square that goes in the center, as you can see over here in your book, they have that little emblem that says Union for the Civil War. This is my block that's going into my red and cream quilt, and you can see I took a one inch square that finishes at one inch, right here and fussy cut one little emblem out of the middle. So you want to look through your fabrics and see if there's some small little motif that you can finish in the middle of there and it'll be a feature block for you. So this is number 24, the New England block. The assembly of our New England block is similar to the layout for our fox and geese block. This corner unit with the two half square triangles and two solid squares is exactly the same as the two half square triangles and two solid squares in this block. But in this block, we've assembled it as a four patch. In this block, you could do it the exact same way, to, but to make my pressing easier, I assembled in rows. So my top row was square, half square triangle, my rectangle, half square triangle, and a square. And then I decided to press the seams out. So they walked out this way and in this way. Then in this row, these were pressed out and these were pressed in. So I pressed in each row, I pressed the seams in the opposite direction of the previous row. So you make the top row, the second row, this center row with our decorative square, and then this row. This unit and this unit are identical. So you can sew yours together in rows or you can make your four patches and then add the sashing between them. So you'll make this unit with sashing 
make a second one for the bottom that's identical, and then the center row, pressing your seams in the opposite direction as you go. The next block for this month is called Old Maid's Puzzle, and it's number 32 in your book. If you look at the illustration for this one, you can see that the center of it is a square that's called a quarter square triangle block. So there are four equal size triangles that make up the center of that block. But then on either end of it, there's a large triangle that's actually a flying geese unit. So there's a flying geese pointing in on there and a flying geese pointing this direction. Now the sides are made up of two triangles that are the exact same size as the other flying geese pieces, and then a center one, and then the four corner blocks. There are only two size triangles in this whole block, but it's put together in more rows than in the quadrants that we've been doing in our previous blocks. The book instructions have you cut all of your pieces from squares. So if you take a square and you cut it twice like that, you would get four triangles. But this is actually Barbara Brackman's block over here. And if you look at it, that's exactly the way Barbara cut it. She took a square, cut it in both directions to get the four triangles for her side triangles. But she used a directional print fabric. So if you look closely, you'll see that the rows of flowers go horizontally here and vertically here. Now she balanced her block by putting the horizontal here and here and the vertical here and here. So you could do that as well. And if you cut your four triangles from a square, that's what you're going to get. Now I prefer that all of my stripes run in the same direction. So I cut my pieces from a strip of fabric. You can cut from a strip using a specialty ruler, so a quick trim and circle ruler, the um, rulers that any of the rulers that will cut half square triangles from a strip will work. I use the 4590 to cut our flying geese pieces, but this is my block that's laid out and ready to be assembled. So in order to sew it together, I will sew these two pieces together and these two pieces together and then I will sew those together diagonally to create that center square. Now that center square is going to be exactly the right size that it needs to be because see my little blunt tips here? I had a two and a half inch strip and that's the size that that needs to be cut so that it finishes as a four inch finished center square. Now my uh, flying geese were cut the same way so this is my flying geese, and then my corner units were cut from a two and a half inch strip as well. And you can see that some of the tips are blunted and some are pointed, because when you cut from a strip, one of your dog ears has already been removed. So this will get sewn on here like this, and it doesn't really matter which one is blunted. So sew so from there to there, so this will make a flying geese unit that would then get sewn to here, and this one will get sewn to there. Now to sew these together, I can sew this piece to here, and then this one to here, like this, then this one, then this one, so that you can do it just the same way that you would do a flying geese. If you're more comfortable actually making the flying geese, you can put a center seam in there just by making flying geese that will go right there. So this is the unit that you need to make. You can follow the instructions that are in the book, but you can also cut from strips for this particular block. Now I liked the brown um, stripe in the block that I just showed you, and this is the one that will go in my red and cream, and I've used the stripe in the center triangles and this one. So all sewn together, this is what your block will look like. So this is Old Maid Puzzle and it's number 32 in your book. Our last block for this month is number 36 in your book and it's called The Right Hand of Friendship. And I'm going to be honest with you, this block takes a little bit of doing to put together. 
this one um, has to be put together in a specific way. And as you're no doubt aware by now, there are no assembly instructions in this book. Barbara Brackman gives you the cutting instructions, but does not tell you how to assemble each block. So I've tried several ways to put it together, and I think I've come up with what I think is the easiest way. But if you have a way that works better for you, I totally understand. Now, the cutting instructions and the assembly are a little bit difficult, so take your time with this one. The cutting instructions have you cutting three and an eighth inch pieces, three and seven eighths inch pieces, and three and a half inch pieces for the eight inch finished blocks. The increments are in here as well for the 12 inch finished blocks, but this is basically a nine patch size looking um, block, but it's put on the bias. So instead of cutting the three and an eighth, I round it up slightly to three and a quarter. Instead of cutting the three and seven eighths inch, I round it up to four. So I've added an eighth of an inch to those pieces. Now, that's not a problem because I'm going to be squaring up. And I know that many of you like to square up when your blocks are completed, but for this block, you have to square up each unit as you put it together. So let's start in the center. This center block that's right here is a quarter square triangle block, meaning there's four triangles that are sewn together to make the square. It's the same as the previous block, but it's different in that the instructions have you cutting squares and cutting them diagonally one time instead of two times. And what that means is that in your block, when you take a square and cut it diagonally one time, the longest edge is always on the bias. So all four sides of the center square are bias. Now, that's really nothing to be afraid of, but I do want to caution you that bias stretches. So if you're a little heavy-handed with the iron, you can change the dimensions of this block very easily just with a good steam press. So we want to be very careful with those biased edges around the outside edge. Now the reason that she had you cut it that way, I'm pretty sure, is because if you were to cut squares and cut twice, then you would need a really odd size square and you would be wasting two of the triangles from each piece. So it was easier to do it this way and have biased edges. Now they're going to be in the center of our block, so we're not going to worry about it. And as always, a little extra spray sizing on your fabric will keep those biases from stretching. So now we need to make the corner points that are going to go on the opposite sides. So this block is going to be put together this way first on a diagonal. So this is my square that's slightly too large, and these are my two triangles that are slightly too large. Now remember, I've only added an eighth of an inch. So I want to sew this triangle, the longest side, which is the biased edge of this triangle, to this square, and I need to center it. So in order to do that, I'm going to take my square, and I'm going to fold it in half, and I'm just going to give it a little finger press along there. Then I'll take my triangle, and I'll line it up so that the raw edge is even along this edge here, and the point of that triangle matches that fold that I made. So now I'm going to sew along here. So once that's sewn together, then I'm going to add the second triangle to an adjoining side. So instead of opposite, you want them next to one another. So then I'm going to fold this in half again, but you want to fold it backward so that you can match up raw edge to raw edge. Because if you fold to the front, if you fold the front to the seam line, you're going to be a quarter of an inch off. So fold again, give it a little finger press, and then sew this triangle to an adjoining side. And you'll have a unit that looks like that. Now here's the one that I've done for this side. So now that you have them sewn together, you have to square them up. So I take my rotary mat like this, lay this down on top of it, and then because these were slightly oversized, 
I can take my quick trim and circle ruler, and you can use any ruler you like, but the reason I use this one is because it has these white lines on here, and those white lines cross right at the quarter inch line. So I can line this up like this, so that the two white lines follow my seam line in either direction. The point of my square, that corner, it sits right there on the quarter inch line, and then I trimmed that little bit of extra, an eighth to a sixteenth of an inch, off of this edge. So I'm sure that that is perfect, and that point is going to meet exactly where I need it to. But I'm not done fit trimming yet. Now what I need to do is trim my sides because once I've increased this, even by an eighth of an inch, I have to square up every unit as I go along. So this center piece right here, sewn together, measures four and one quarter inches, raw edge to raw edge. So I need to trim this unit to measure four and a quarter inches from raw edge to raw edge. That means that the center point here is two and one eighth inches. So I'm going to use a square ruler and I'm going to line this up like this so that my one eighth inch line right here is lined up with that point. My raw edge is lined up right here and then I can trim this side. Then I'll rotate it and use the four and one quarter line here and trim here. So now my center point is centered in the four and a quarter inch dimension that goes here. So I would have the two dark brown points would look just like that, just as they do here. So now I can sew this here, and I'm sure that point will match because I trimmed it and squared it up. This unit will get mat sewn to here once it's assembled. And now this unit has to have the side triangles put onto it. So I'll put the side triangle here and the side triangle here and sew those together. And then I want to center this with this. So I'm going to center that point with this. So I can fold this in half and put a little crease there and match that point with there. And I'll do that over here as well. So this point right there is the center right there and then this center here. These pieces would already be attached and I would match those two up. Sew across here and your block will be assembled. Now this is the block for my red and cream colored quilt. So I've gone ahead and done that and then I laid my larger eight and a half inch ruler on top and lined up the center lines and trimmed just a scant bit from the outside edge where these larger triangles and squares were extended beyond by about a sixteenth of an inch. So take a deep breath before you take um, this block into consideration and if you're not making all 50 blocks and you're a new quilter this might be one that you might want to set aside for later. But if you like a challenge, this is a fun block to put together. So those are your blocks for July for the Civil War Sew Along.